Okay, no pun intended, but one of the most powerful rules for integration is actually the power rule for integration. And there's actually two power rules we're going to talk about. Here we're going to talk about the simple power rule for integration. And the simple power rule is used when you want to integrate a single variable to a power with respect to its variable. So here we want to integrate x to the n dx with respect to, d, to x. So when we integrate this, we will get x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. Now, this works as long as x is not negative 1. So it doesn't work on 1 over x. Uh, and I gave you a sneak preview of what the integral of 1 over x is in the last video. Now, there's actually a general power rule that we'll talk about later. That's for when you have functions raised to powers rather than just a variable raised to power. So let's apply the power rule on some problems. Now, the first couple of problems, I'll just give them to you directly as a power, and you won't have a whole lot of work to do. So if I want to integrate x to the fifth dx, the power rule says increase the exponent by 1. So let's do that. Increase the exponent by 1, and I get 5 by 1. And then divide by the same number. So I'm going to divide by the same number, which is 5 plus 1. So that's going to give me x to the 6th over 6. And then don't forget, remember, you have to add a constant for, for these indefinite integrals. Okay, now here's another one. t to the 1 half dt. So I'm integrating t to the 1 half with respect to t. So again, increase the exponent by 1. So the new exponent is 1 half plus 1. And then the denominator is also 1 half plus 1. Well, that's 3 halves. So I have t to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves. Now, don't forget your c. And then uh, when you take t to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, that's the same as t to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. So you end up with 2 thirds t to the 3 halves plus your constant. Now, you need to be familiar with converting radicals um, and rational exponents, just like you were for differentiation, um, you need to be able to do it for integration. So the, the square root of x cubed dx, if I want to integrate that, that would be the same as integrating x to the 3 halves dx. And then I can apply the power rule, add 1 to 3 halves to get the new exponent, and then the denominator will be 3 halves plus 1, so that's going to be x to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves plus a constant, and then 2 fifths times x to the 5 halves plus your constant. Uh, here's one more. Uh, 1 over x to the 3 fifths dx can be written as x to the ne negative 3 fifths dx. And then you add your 1 to the exponent, and then uh, you get negative 3 fifths plus 1 for the exponent, and then you also get negative 3 fifths plus 1 for the denominator. And negative 3 fifths plus 1 is 2 fifths, so you get x to the 2 fifths divided by 2 fifths plus your constant, which is 5 halves x to the 2 fifths plus a constant. So that's how you uh, incorporate the power rule. There are some other rules. Um, if you wanted to integrate 0 dx, then that would just be a constant because the derivative of any constant is 0. Now, if you wanted to integrate a constant other than 0, then that would equal the constant times the variable plus another constant. So, for instance, if you wanted to integrate 5 dx, then that would be 5x plus another constant. Okay. Now, um, that's the constant rule. Uh, not to be confused with the constant multiple rule. The constant multiple rule says if you want to integrate a constant times a function, um, then that would be the same as the constant times the integral of the function. So let me show you how that works. So if I wanted to integrate 5 times x squared dx, I can factor the 5, the constant, outside of the integral and just integrate x squared dx. So x squared dx, we can use the power rule and get x cubed over 3, 
and then you multiply it by 5, and so you get 5x cubed over 3 plus a constant. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, why didn't you, when you integrated this, why didn't you have x cubed over 3 plus a constant, and then when you multiplied by 5, why didn't you also multiply the 5 by c? Well, it turns out that it really doesn't matter whether my constant is c or 5c. All I'm doing is just showing that it's a constant because c is a constant, 5c is a constant. So it doesn't really matter uh, when it comes to multiplying the 5 by a constant. And the same is going to be true with the sum and difference rules that we'll see. So if I want to integrate the sum f of x plus g of x, I can integrate the two terms separately as separate integrals. So if I wanted to integrate um, x squared plus x d of x, I could integrate x squared d of x and integrate x dx separately, then add the results together. Well, if you integrate this, you're going to get x cubed over 3, and then if you integrate x, you're going to get x squared over 2, and then you add the constant. Again, we don't worry about you know, you might say, well, don't you get a constant for this one and another constant for this one, and then you add the two constants together? Well, if you add two constants together, you're still going to get a constant. So we just leave it as constant. And the same thing with the difference. So if you have the integral of the difference of two functions, that's equal to the difference of the two integrals. So same, basically the same uh, terms, just using different sign. Uh, the integral x squared minus x dx is the integral x squared dx minus the integral x dx. So it's just like it was above, except now I'm, I have a difference plus a constant. And then um, the simple power rule we've already covered. Okay, now I'm going to give you the, the simple rules for trig functions. If you want to integrate the cosine of x dx, that's the same as sine x plus a constant. So here's a simple example. Uh, if I want to integrate the sum of 2x plus cosine x dx, now up here, I want to make something clear. Up here, when I say you can break these up into two terms, you don't have to break them up into two terms. Okay? This just is just the rule that tells me that I can take the, take the antiderivative of each term separately. So same thing here. To integrate 2x plus cosine x dx, I can integrate 2x and get x squared. And then I can integrate cosine x and get sine x. And so the integral is going to be x squared plus sine x plus a constant. For sine x dx, the integral is minus cosine x plus a constant. You might remember that the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, so the derivative of minus cosine x would be plus sine x. So if I wanted to integrate this, I would have the integral of 5 would be 5x, but since the integral of sine x is minus cosine x, I would actually get minus a minus cosine x, so that's where the plus comes from, and then plus a constant. And then... Um, now, we don't have rules for just straight rules for secant function, tangent, cotangent, stuff like that yet. Those are too complicated for now. But we can integrate the derivatives, the known derivatives of certain functions. Like we know secant squared is the derivative of tangent. So if we integrate secant squared x dx, we're going to get tangent x plus a constant. So if I wanted to integrate 10 secant squared x dx, well... I can use this rule along with the constant multiple rule and say, well, that's just going to be 10 tangent x plus a constant. And since I know the derivative of secant x is secant x plus tangent, I mean, sorry, since I know the derivative of uh, secant x is secant x times tangent x, then I know if I integrate secant x tangent x, I'm going to get secant x plus a constant. So if I want to integrate x squared plus secant x um, tangent x, um, let me correct this for just a minute. That parentheses that's open here should be closed behind tangent x, not behind secant x. So this is just x squared plus secant x times tangent x. And so you know how to integrate x squared. That's x cubed over 3. 
And now you know the integral of secant x tangent x is just secant x. So the result is x cubed over 3 plus secant x plus a constant. And we know the derivative of cotangent is minus cosecant squared. So the integral of cosecant squared x would be minus cotangent x plus a constant. So if I wanted to integrate 2 cosecant squared x dx, that would be minus 2 cotangent x plus a constant. And then last, um, the derivative of cosecant x is actually minus cosecant cotangent. So when I integrate cosecant x cotangent x dx, then I get minus cosecant x plus a constant. So if I had um, um, cosine x minus cosecant cotangent x, well, I can integrate cosine x using the uh, first rule that I had up here, and that's going to be sine x. And then I can integrate minus cosecant cotangent x, because remember, when you integrate this, you're going to get minus cosecant x, and then you have a minus with it. So you actually have minus a minus, which is plus cosecant x for the uh, integral of that term. And then again, don't forget your constant. So here are some other examples applying basic rules of integration. So go ahead and read over these. I don't think you need to, me to spend a lot of time on these. There's your constant rule. Here's your constant multiple rule. Here's another constant multiple rule. Freeze the video if you have to. Here's a sum rule with a trig function. And then here is another. Here's a rule that, that combines both the uh, constant multiple rule and the sum rule. And notice how I broke it up. I broke it up as 3 times x to the 1 half dx plus 5 times x to the negative 3 dx. See how I, I wrote the x's as x to powers. And then you just integrate that using the power rule in both cases. And then, of course, you simplify your result so that you don't have any negative exponents. Now, if you read this, you'll see that you can skip over... Um, you know, you really don't have to break it up like this. If you read this, you'll notice that once I wrote it like this, you can actually just integrate both these terms at the same time and not actually treat it as two different integrals. And you'll get the same result. Now, here's, here's a couple of other things that you need to consider. We don't know how to integrate uh, 2x plus 5 quantity squared. But if I expand that, in other words, multiply it out, I get 4x squared plus 20x plus 25, and then I can apply the basic differentiation rules to each term, and I'll get these three terms plus the constant for the antiderivative. Uh, this one, I don't know how to integrate this difference because I don't have a rule for that, but if I factor and cancel the x minus 2s, then I just get a trinomial, and I can integrate that using the basic rules of integration. And then this one, I actually can break up the numerator into x cubed over x squared minus 3 over x squared, and x cubed over x squared is x, and 3 over x squared is, 3 to the, is 3x to the negative 2, and then you can use your power rules on both of those terms to get the antiderivative. Um, down here is four practice problems that you can practice on. Their answers are underneath them. So look at these four practice problems and practice on those and then you can start the video back after you practice. Okay, so let's say that we have, so we know the derivative of a function is 6x squared plus 2x minus 5. Well, if you integrate that, you get 2x cubed plus x squared minus 5x. And if you are given that y is 9 when uh, x is 0, that should say x is 0, then you know f of 0 is 9. And so therefore, if you let, if you let, this be, if you let x be 0 in here, you'll just get c. And so f of 0 would be c, but we were given that f of 0 was 9, so c must equal 9. And now we can rewrite the function with the constant. And again, that's because we were given that additional information. Okay, here's another initial value problem. Um, just pause the video and go through my work here because I don't have time on this video to finish it. 
but it's not too difficult because you have to use the initial value information to uh, get your constant.